Okay, this right, conference will now be recorded. Okay, hi everyone. I'm Amanda Baker. I'm the vice president of Florida Self Advocates Network, or Florida Sand for short. This session is called "So You Think You Want to Start a Self Advocacy Group." Um, please forgive me. First of all, we have a bit of a setup here with technology. Um, I'm having to look back and forth from my computer to my phone, so I apologize for that. I'll be trying to make as much eye contact as possible. And um, there's going to be an email at the end of this presentation where you can email and ask questions about anything that I'm going to talk about today. So feel free to do that. Um, so the first we're going to advance the slide to the first slide that we have here. And um, this is going to show you a map of the current groups of Florida Sand. And as you can see, we have uh, 19 groups throughout Florida from the very north of Florida all the way down south. And um, I live in Tallahassee. So I am president of Elephant Herds in Tallahassee. There's also Elephant Herds in Panama City where I used to live before Hurricane Michael, but that's how I am involved in Florida Sand personally. But these are the groups. So if you are wondering if there's a group in your area, just look at this map and see what might be close to you. Um, if there isn't a group close to you and you want to get involved, email us and uh, maybe we can help you start a group that would, we would love to have you involved in Florida Sand. So we're going to move on and talk to you about the things that you need to have a successful self-advocacy group. And the first thing I'm going to talk about, though, is what is Florida Sand? So Florida Sand, we evolved from a grassroots self-advocacy project that the uh, Florida Developmental Disability Council, they uh, started this project where they gave small grants to different groups. They either were just starting or some of us were already established and they gave us these grants to start groups in our areas. So um, each group was given a grant and training and support to start a group. And um, we came together as a statewide network about nine years ago. And then we became a 501c3 in 2015. Um, so we hope to be completely independent within two to three years. Right now, we still get funding from the Florida Developmental Disability Council, but we're working on other types of funding and other ways to make money ourselves so that we won't be completely dependent on them, even though we very much appreciate their support and expect to be partners with them for as long as we exist. We wanna be independent as well. So um, talking a little bit more about Florida Sand, uh, we've been having a statewide conference every year and we're changing it to a bicentennial conference starting this year in 2020. Our next conference is gonna be November 2020. And then from that point on, it will be every two years. Um, so we also just established the Breaking Barriers Training Academy this year. Um, and it, marked ourselves as experts. So we're marketing ourselves as experts in the field of self-advocacy. We're going to be offering presentations and trainings for organizations um, as a way to make money for ourselves and to provide high quality um, 
training and information around self-advocacy for the state and, and beyond. And we are also planning on becoming VR vendors of various services regarding self-advocacy. So um, our groups, kind of how it works is that our groups have their own local meeting and events and projects that they work on and they have their own officers and each group has an advisor and as a whole we have a board of directors that's composed of a member from each of the groups that we have um, we have two statewide meetings a year where we come together and talk and vote on issues that affect our organization and we um, also hold different trainings and activities for all of our members of our groups to attend. And Organizational Management Solutions provides our technical assistance and support. They actually have a contract with the Florida Developmental Disability Council at this time to provide our technical assistance. So um, each group has its own political issues and different issues that they work on um, by themselves. And then we have issues that we come together and work on together um, as a larger organization. Um, some groups were well established like People's First, they were one of the very first self-advocacy organizations in Florida, uh, well before Florida Sand ever came to be. And then some of us were just starting when we started Florida Sand, like my group, Elevators. So, um, now we're going to talk about how you start a self-advocacy group and the things that you need to do that. So the first thing you're gonna do is identify the needs in your community. What are the issues that you face as a self-advocate? And what issues do others face in your community? If you could change anything, what would it be? If, if you could change something that would make it easier for you, or if there's something that you wish you could fix, what would it be? And what things would improve your life or the lives of others in your community? And it's important to realize that it, it could be an issue related to disability and sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's a issue that affects everyone. So now um, we have some examples of some issues that are currently being addressed by Florida Sand, both locally at our local group level and statewide. We um, are working on transportation, employment. We've worked on children in nursing homes. A lot of people don't even realize that there are children in nursing homes. And, and we, we are of the opinion that they should live in the community if at all possible. And um, so we were fighting for that for a while because it was a huge issue in our state. And we uh, work on things like physical accessibility to buildings and such, um, issues to uh, access to community events and buildings. And one of our groups has a very intensive program around bullying that they go to schools and they teach kids uh, about 
not bullying and how to be accepting of all other people. And it's a really great program. And um, another issue that we've worked extensively with is provider rates, particularly provider rates of direct service people who provide services like personal care and things like that. So the next thing that you're going to do is identify the people that can help you. And these groups, these people fall into these groups. You're going to identify self-advocates. You're going to identify family members. You're going to identify community organizations and partners. And you're going to identify sponsors that can help you. So the first group of people that you're going to identify are self-advocates. These are other people with disabilities, um, and you want your organization to be led by self-advocates. It's very important to have the input of other people, but the whole point of a self-advocacy group is that it's led by people with disabilities. And you're going to make sure that your group is diverse have different types of disabilities um, because even when you have a disability you know the issues that you face but you may not know the issues that other people with other types of disabilities face so it's really important to have different types of disabilities represented in your group so that you can work on everyone's issues and you're going um you're, you're going to make sure that you don't get so caught up in your own issues that you lose sight of the bigger picture. It's okay to fight for your issues and to have your group help you with those, but you want to make sure that you're looking at how things affect everyone and not just yourself. So the next group of people that you're going to identify are family members. These are family members of people with disabilities, and they can provide key insights and support to you and information um, that your group can use. You don't want them to have a leadership position, but you want them to know that you acknowledge that they are important and you really appreciate their input because it really is invaluable. So next you're going to identify organizations and community partners that can help you. Um, these are organizations that can support and um, support you and share your goals. Um, there's always strength in numbers. So the more people that you have that can support what you're doing, the more you're going to be able to accomplish. Um, and it's important to know that you don't have to agree with an organization on every single thing. But if you have an issue that you agree on, you can work together and um, kind of work past your other issues and join together for your common things that you um, are both going to gain from. So it's important that you, to know that you don't have to agree on every single little thing to work together. So these are some of the examples of our community partners, uh, my group, Elephant Herds, we partnered with Chautauqua Learn and Serve, which is a program that people enter after they've aged out of the school system and they uh, work on teaching people how to be independent and how to ride the trolley and how to teach other people to ride the trolley and um, some other things in the community. And so they helped us work on a uh, protest to waiver uh, cuts one time and it was very successful. And 
New Horizons, which we have Arizona with us today, and maybe he'll talk about it in a little while. I'll finish this slide. Let him talk about his um, partnerships that he's done with his group. I just put many because there are many, but Arizona, maybe you can give us an example of one of your partnerships that have been one of the more successful community partnerships that you've done with your group. Is that give me the opportunity to Arizona, that's some good um, information to have. I know that you've done a lot of partnerships with your group, so thank you for being on today. Um, thank you. Our next, well, I'm sorry, thanks. Um, our next slide just gives some examples of our statewide partners that we have. Um, we have Florida Self Advocacy Central, which is our online presence, and we have a lot of information there. Um, we have Florida Center for Inclusive Communities at University of South Florida, which Arizona does a lot of work with them too, and I have as well. They're a University Center of Excellence on Developmental Disabilities, and they're a great resource. They have lots of information. Um, so if you need information on a certain topic or you're working on a certain issue, they're um, a good resource to go to to find out information. Um, we also have the Melman Center, which is the University Center of Excellence on Developmental Disability in Miami. They're a great resource. We have the Florida Developmental Disability Council. These are just a few examples of our partners and the people that we, we depend on when we need people to help with the things that we're doing. So the next thing that you're gonna look for are sponsors. 
And people can sponsor you in different ways. When you think of sponsor, you may think of financial and that is okay. Um, it could be a financial gift and those are wonderful. Um, and some people will give you a financial contribution one time. Some people do it every year or just for a certain event. But also sponsorships can be other things like service to your organization. They may help you um, run errands or work an event or they may give you meeting space. Um, there are so many different ways that people can sponsor you. And um, these are some of our sponsors that we have for our conference. Um, one of them is a, was a food sponsor and disability rights um, comes every year and they contribute financially, but they also contribute usually with a session or two on different topics and they have a table in our exhibit hall and um, same with Florida Center for Inclusive Communities there. They help sponsor our conference every year. So these are some more examples of sponsorship kind of on a local level from our different groups. We have a group of Abilities Vente that is good friends with a musician named David Roth who holds concerts and will give part of the proceeds of the concerts to their group. Um, many of our groups have their meeting space donated, as I mentioned. And People First is one of our groups that have big fundraisers and so they have a lot of sponsors for their bullathons and their wrestling uh, fundraisers that they have. Um, so our next thing that we are going to talk about is Florida Sub Advocacy Central. As I said, uh, it's our online presence and we post a lot of information that is relevant to the disability community. And the cool thing about this is that we have staff writers who write our stories that are self-advocates and we are able to pay them to write for us. So we're very proud of that. Um, the next thing that you're gonna do once you um, identify the people that can help you. Uh, you're going to get focused. So you're going to um, decide your mission, your vision, and your purpose. You may not have all three at one time, and that's okay. But you're going to get together, you're going to meet, and you're going to be like, what are we doing here? Why are we here? What is our mission? What do we hope to accomplish? And, you know, go from there, make sure that you're all on the same page. It's going to take a long time. It took us a long time. And, um, but anything worth having right is worth putting in the work. And so you have to make sure that you know where you've been so that you can know where you're going and, um, get on the same page and have a plan for what you want to do and how you want to get there. So this next slide is just, I'm not going to read it because you're, you'll be able to read it. Uh, the, this whole PowerPoint is being um, made available with the recording. So you'll be able to read it, but the, these are examples of the mission, vision, and purpose of Florida Sand. And um, I know Arizona can share the sentiment of how many meetings and how many conversations, dare I say arguments, that it took to get to a comprehensive uh, mission, vision, and purpose that we could all agree on. 
and feel very confident in. And um, and it's okay if these things change too as your um, organization evolves, but this is just examples for you. And our next slide, uh, I just put uh, examples of elephant herds uh, on here, the mission statement, because for us, personally and it's just our personal preference on a local level we didn't want to use the word disability or disabled but people do and that's fine it was just for our people at that time we wanted to celebrate our ability over our disability and so it took a while but we um we found a mission statement that we really thought um encompassed everything we wanted to accomplish without putting the emphasis on disability per se. So that's just an example. And so you're going to next decide your structure and you're going to decide when do we meet, where do we meet, um, who, what offices are we going to have in our organization and who's gonna hold those offices? When are we gonna have elections? Um, how are you gonna conduct business? Are you gonna have Robert's Rules of Order? Are you not gonna have that much of a stringent structure? Is it gonna be more lax? What are the rules? You know, it's very important to establish a good working order of how you're gonna do things and, um, you're going to want to start your bylaws and make sure that you get a good set of working bylaws and um, you're going to understand that that's a living document and it's going to change all the time as your organization changes. So the next thing that you're going to do after you establish your structure and you have your mission and you know what you want to accomplish, you're going to get educated. You're going to read the Americans with Disabilities Act. You're going to read the Individual Disability Education Act. You're going to uh, read up on your city ordinances um, when it comes to sidewalks, if that's the issue that you're working on. You're going to get familiar with who runs your paratransit system. Whatever issue that you're dealing with, you're going to read up on, you're going to research. Because when you go talk to people about your issue, whether it's a legislator or your local commissioner, whoever it is, you want to know what you're talking about and you want them to know that you know what you're talking about. And if people take you seriously, they are going to be more apt to do what you're asking them to do. Um, and keep in mind that issues can be local, state, or federal. So you're going to want to make sure that you identify which one of those things that your issue falls under. And you're going to want to find the person that's most right to talk to about that issue. And that's part of getting educated as well. Um, and, you know, it may take a while, it may, the research sometimes takes a long time, but the good thing is that most of the time once you research and you learn these things, you know them. And even if people leave the position, you'll be able to say, well, what was so-and-so, who replaced this person? And, and so you'll have your foot in the door. So that's always a good thing. So um, don't be afraid to ask questions. There's no such thing as a stupid question. And once you ask the question, you'll know and you, you don't have to worry about it. So, um, so many of the organizations, like I said, uh, Florida Center for Inclusive Communities and the Melman Center and Florida Developmental Disability Council, they're a great resource for information as you're researching certain issues if they don't have the information they might be able to tell you where to get it so th that's a good start and um if 
an organization can't or won't help you for some reason, it's very important that you just keep going until you find someone who will help you because there always is someone and everyone has a boss. So if you just keep going and not give up, you will find someone eventually that will help you. Um, attend trainings and webinars. There are a ton of free webinars and trainings that are available. You just have to put yourself on um, email listservs, um, join groups that have announcements that it, a lot of times it doesn't cost a penny. And all you have to do is invest your time to go to these things and it is well worth your time. Um, and you can search for information on the internet as well. Um, the next thing you're gonna do after you do all these other things is take action. You're gonna write letters and you're gonna um, visit your legislators. You're gonna go to that uh, city commission meeting. You're gonna talk to whoever you need to talk to to address your issue. And you can't be afraid of that. You just have to go for it because once you arm yourself with that information, you have to do something with it. Make sure that people know what your issue is and how you want them to help you change it. And it's also good to come to them with a solution and not just a problem. Um, you want to um, tell them what you want them to do, but let them know that, hey, I've thought about this and I think that this would be a good way to help with that. And so that's always helpful so that you're not just always coming with them in a negative way. Um, you're gonna find the heads of the organizations that you wanna deal with. And um, you're gonna, another thing you can do is have town meetings and uh, call newspapers and call the TV stations. Um, sometimes you just have to call whoever will listen and whoever you can get on your side, the more people, like I said earlier, the better. Um, and let your community, always let your community know what you're doing, because I guarantee you, if they know that you're doing something that's this positive, they're gonna wanna get involved. Oh, so, oh yes, Arizona. Uh, what a great job you done. What a great job you done in presenting to him. He was looking for groups. Now, well, I know when I was starting the groups, it was very frustrating because you had to figure out where you're going to be. And figure out how you're gonna get into the mini place. Uh, what do you recommend for a leader who is going to do that thing dreadful time? I'm sorry, Arizona. Um, I had a little bit of a glitch there. Uh, what was your question? The question was, when you are a new leader and you're dying to do your new groups and you're looking for a new place to meet, you're looking for how you're going to get there, all that realistic planning ahead, and what, what do you think will help? The stress level comes down when you're doing that. Well, I think that for me, uh, I looked at where the transportation ran and things. I had to t tell myself on a regular basis that things are going to happen no matter what. Things are going to go wrong sometimes. There's nothing, you know, I can do to stop that. But, um, you know, I looked at places that were close to trolley stops 
and places that people could access um, easily. And then I talked to the people around the there in those buildings to see if they would mind us meeting there. And so that's how I approached it. You you probably yourself have more suggestions, but I just kept mapping it out like with transportation and acts. I wanted to make sure people could access. And then I had to go to the people in the surrounding area to see if we could meet there and if they would donate the space for us to meet there. And how do you uh, decide the topics between me? How do you what? Decide what is going to be your topic and meeting. Well, I tend to ask the group what it is. Um, a lot of the topics come from maybe an issue that one of the group members is having. You know, um, if, if somebody's having a, a social security issue, then I call the social security office and see if they have somebody that can maybe talk to us about that problem. So I always consult the group but then if they don't have any good ideas or something doesn't come up then I try to think of things that I've been through that people might want to know more about that might be helpful so that they don't have to deal with some of the problems that I have had to in the past so and uh, one more question is when you uh uh, find people to put in office, what do you look for to tell you that that person is the right fit for the son of the no the, taker? The, 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 the. That's a good question. I, I think the biggest quality of people need to have is their willingness to do the work because it takes work to do anything worth doing and so um, leadership qualities are important but I think those can be taught so it's really important I think for people to find the people that have a willingness to serve in that capacity and then be able to meet them where they are and help train them to where they need to be um, because people may be new to leadership, but I think everyone has the potential. They just have to be willing to do the work. So basically, you have to be patient. With yes, very patient. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So now we're going to talk a little bit um, more about taking action. Um, and yeah, like I said, you have to go with them, go to people with solutions. You have to be willing to compromise with people. You may not always get everything that you want, but if you can get some things you want, that's better than nothing. So sometimes you have to be willing to take that compromise and um, always point out the benefit of why it will be helpful for that person to do what you want them to do because there's always going to be a benefit to them if they do what you ask and always be appreciative uh, when someone does something for you write a thank you note tell them thank you go out of your way to publicly thank them just be very appreciative in any way that you can. Um, our next slide here is um, our self-advocates receiving training. This is one of our groups at one of our trainings that we did. And then we have 
one of our groups at Developmental Disability Awareness Day, which a lot of our Florida Stand groups come to every year. And we talk to legislators about issues affecting people with disabilities every year. And we, we have close to 100 advocates every year that come. Um, and then we are going to talk about now getting involved in your community, hold events in your community. Most of them are going to be related to disability in uh, our community, but they don't always have to be. Um, sometimes we have food drives. Sometimes we have events that just are good for the whole community because you want to be recognized as an organization that is active in your community. Um, and we, we have all kinds of speakers at our meetings about social security and uh, we have speakers on eye budget issues and different things that people with disabilities like Arizona and I were talking about speakers can come to our meetings and can open those up to the public and people that that's a way to get people involved in your group and get involved in the community and get involved with existing programs like I said get involved with a food drive Salvation Army I know that Arizona, you do you do Thanksgiving dinners, right, for people. You raise money for that and, and do that, right? I, I'm not sure exactly how you do that, but I know you do those kinds of things. Yes, I do. Um, we, we do. we do a GoFundMe page where we can go online. You can only what is all I do. It's easy to just go and do all the ads for one time. People will give what you want to give when they want to give. You want, you want to do it like a month or two ahead so the people won't be rushed to do it. Right, so that's kind of what our next slide's talking about, starting your own program. Um, you know, whenever I was in Panama City, we had the Dalton Bellis Award, and I would raise money, and we used to give an award to a self-advocate every year that either worked or volunteered in the community, and we gave them a year's worth of trolley passes for free. So you, you want to if you establish your own thing that you do as a group for your community that may or may not be disability related, but you want people to see that people with disabilities are part of the community and that we care about our community and we want what's best for everyone. So our next slide here is um, a group that is holding an event. Um, Stand Up for Independence. They do a lot of different things, a lot of events, and they're always great about sending us pictures, as you can see, but this is just an example of some of the things that our groups do. Um, so now, um, we're going to talk a little bit more about getting involved in your community. Um, and one of the things that you can do is talk to your group about um, how they're involved in the community already. Are they already a part of other organizations? Can they be on another board or another organization that may not be related to disability, but they may need a person with a disability on the board. I know some of our people are on local transportation boards and um, different, you know, community advisory boards that are helpful to everyone. And um, let's see, we, um, we used to have uh, Florida Self-Advocacy Alliance, 
that kind of um, morphed into Florida Self Advocacy Central, but um, there's still kind of groups like that around. And then there's Florida Care Council. A lot of our Florida SAN members are part of their local uh, Florida Care Councils because there's different districts. And then some of our members are members of the Florida Developmental Disability Council that does a lot of projects for people with disabilities. And um, there's Self Advocates Becoming Empowered, which is the national organization for self advocates um, that many of our people are involved in as well. These are just some examples of how to get involved. Um, the next thing you have to think about is fundraising. Um, there's different types of fundraising. These are just a few. But uh, some of our groups have sold t-shirts, held dance-a-thons, bowl -a -thons, sold armbands, um, held bake sales, um, wrestling matches. Uh, one of our groups got Publix to underwrite some of those reusable shopping bags, and they sold those. Um, this is an example of one of the t-shirts that a couple of our groups sell, label jars, not people. So the next thing that you want to think about is recruitment. And, you know, getting involved in the community is a big part of that. Um, so you can go to other community events, other board meetings and whatnot and recruit people that way. Uh, attend those events and conferences throughout your community. Um, have special meetings just for recruitment. Um, have meetings at different times in different locations just to see if you can get more people to come. Um, Hand out information on your meetings and activities. Leave flyers in different places. Um, I know that we left flyers at our local APD office, for example. Um, and you want to leave information where you know that the people you want at your meetings are going to go. So. Uh, that is all I have for slides, and I'm just going to see if anyone had any other questions or wanted me to elaborate on anything. Amanda, this is Kelly. Could you go through quickly what services? Florida Sand Fellows and Florida Sand could offer um, people out there who might want to start a self-advocacy group, um, since that's one of the services you guys are providing is some consulting in that regard. Sure. So we can provide um, technical support and uh, just being able to meet with you uh, over the phone, sometimes in person, depending on where you are. but uh, we can provide resources and any of the fellows. We have a fellows program of a few of us who um, actually get paid through Florida Sand to help other people and mentor them. So we can provide you with a mentor and someone who will help you get a plan on how to start a, um, a group and and things that you can try, resources you might want to try. Um, we can provide trainings. Uh, we're developing uh, many kinds of training right now uh, for organizations, for individuals, on any disability-related topic that you can think of, we could do a training. Um, if you have somebody that you think might be a good advisor for a group or might want to help you, but they don't know where to start or don't know much about the disability community, we can help with that. We can provide training that way. So there's a lot of things that we can do. Yep. 
Yeah, we, um, Arizona is actually one of the fellows, Amanda is, and uh, they are ready and able, depending on where you are, to um, come speak to groups, provider agencies about self-advocacy and starting self-advocacy groups. So Florida Sand definitely wants to be a resource for anyone in that regard. And I know, yes, and I know that we have the email address, but will you just clearly state the email address for people so they can email us if they yep. I think it's on this last slide it's on the it's, last slide yeah so our website is easy it's flsand.org flsand.org and then our oh my okay we do not have the email address here on this slide oh. sorry I apologize for that so this is our email address and we this email comes directly to me and to me and then I forward it to Amanda in Arizona, whoever needs to see it. But you can contact Florida Sand directly through this email address. It's F L S A N. I'm sorry, it is not. Scratch that. It's the word contact, contact F L S A N D, contact F L S A N D at gmail.com and we will add it to the slide before we send yes, it we out will add it so to the it'll slide. be on yes. there but. yes so amanda so with your family cafe materials in addition to this link you should have got a copy of the powerpoint as well so i will uh, update this before that so on the powerpoint slides the email address will be there So we appreciate that you've taken the time to listen to our session on how to start a self-advocacy group and email us with any questions. And we will be looking forward to hearing from you and anxious to help you get started. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.